At 18, I kind of realized there was no way I was good enough to make it as a concert pianist. So I went to university. I didn't touch a note from the piano for 10 years. I went into the city and a job that I hated, but it was stable, you know, it was a good income. I was good at what I did. I didn't enjoy it, but it paid the bills. And at the time I was married, young family, little boy, and to walk away from that was a terrifying idea with absolutely no kind of guarantee of success, if anything, the opposite. So I quit my job and I studied the piano. And it was difficult, you know, I've got to be honest, things got very hairy pretty quickly. You know, after three or four years, I wasn't where I'd wanted to be. It was becoming harder and harder, more and more stressful. And then things got very bleak and I ended up in a couple of different mental hospitals. Um, not through choice, you know, I was put there. There were dark times, you know, suicide attempts and self-harm and, you know, and all the madness that goes with it and the, and the paranoia and the, and the craziness. And this place was so kind of strict. You weren't allowed books, you weren't allowed music, you weren't allowed iPods, DVDs, TVs, nothing. You know, you're there to get well with no distractions. My buddy Neil, he heard that there was no music and he kind of really disagreed with us, as did I. And, um, so he came on a visitor's day and he smuggled me in a little iPod Nano and he'd loaded some of the pieces he knew I would love. And, and one of them I hadn't heard before, which is this Bach Marcello. And I'm out in this little I think they called it the Serenity Garden. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, good God. Anyway, I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to get all zen, and I hear this piece, and, you know, for the first time in so long, just the void, just the raging and the void, everything just stopped, and it was just... It was just such a magical moment, you know. I'm not a religious person, not at all, but, you know, there is that echo that, you know, out of the depths, you know, I cry to you, and suddenly something was there, and, and I just knew it would be okay. The music did in, that, what is it, five minutes, 30 seconds, something? that I hadn't managed to find in months and months. The piece now, you know, I play it and it's like, I remember where I've come from. I realize where I am now. I mean, most importantly, it, it reminds me how lucky I am. Greek wrote right? some phenomenal pieces. Yeah, who can forget Morecambe and Wise, right? You know, the great. Well, you know, he, he came out with some real corkers, you know, some really great pieces. And 
Ginsburg comes along and he takes this trite little piece and just decides to have fun with it. Well, the theme, it, it's great because it starts so simple. And then he makes it slightly more difficult. Just more notes. And then we have this kind of rumbling bass. Which is fantastic. To me, it's just, it's what music making should all be about. You know, anyone can play the piano, but to have fun with it, to take a piece that everyone knows and just, you know, make it one's own. This piece, for me, I, I always make up my own little stories. You know, sometimes it's my, my ex-wife's divorce lawyers or, you know, it's the psychiatrist coming for you or, you know, crazy stalkers, but, you know, with that whole... It's kind of, it's a certain relentlessness to it, which I really love. It just gets more and more and more and more powerful until by the end, the whole thing just, you know, your head just explodes.